We've been doing these biographical studies, as you as you know, uh, over the past weeks. We have uh, been looking at these men who the Lord called out of the multitudes of disciples who were following him. There were uh, there were some. Uh, Sister Julia, you can come sit right here on the front row. <laughs> that, that, that's fine. You sit wherever you want to. Uh, the uh, but the, this out of that multitude of disciples, there were there were twelve men that that the Lord chose specifically, and and called them to be His apostles. And so so far we have we have seen some of them. We've talked about Peter, uh, and and then we talked about John. Talked about James, talked about Andrew, Matthew, Thomas, and uh, and then in the study together last time we saw the Apostle Philip, the Apostle Philip. Uh, now we're going to come to the next Apostle that we want to look at, and this is actually a man who is known by two names. He's known by two names, and this is going to be somewhat of a challenge because, to be very honest, he is one of the less prominent of the apostles. There's not a whole lot of information, not a whole lot of information that we can find there uh, in the word of God concerning this man. However, that has not stopped and not hindered some commentators from uh, going off into some kind of uh, uh, strange ideas. For example, Jerome, uh, in his commentary on Matthew, mentioned uh, he mentioned a book called The Gospel of Bartholomew, which is actually a spurious book. It's uh, it's not part of our canon of Scripture. It's one of those apocryphal books. And, and the interesting thing is, is that there has not been a single copy of this book ever found. Uh, it is quoted by some of the old, early, early, early uh, church writers, but, but no copy is extant uh, today. Uh, however, be that as it may, uh, Jerome, quoting from the Gospel of Marth Bartholomew, actually raised the possibility and even suggested that Bartholomew was the only one of the 12 apostles to be of a noble birth, to be of a noble birth. And I'll explain uh, why that is here in just a few minutes. Uh, but again, all of these things, they're, they're just speculations, to be honest. They're speculations that do not have a single shred of, of biblical evidence to support them. Uh, and so therefore, as we have tried to do with the other men we have looked at, we're just going to stick with what the Bible says. We're, we're just going to make that to be our focus. Uh, look at the biblical facts as we look at this man with the two names. So with that is... With that in mind, let's talk about, first of all, uh, his circumstances, his circumstances. And, uh, and, and as we consider the circumstances of this man, we'll notice, we'll, we'll notice his person, his person. Uh, when, when we come to the, to the listings uh, of the 12 apostles, uh, we find in the synoptic gospels, uh, that's Matthew chapter 10, verse 3, Mark chapter 3, verse 18, Luke chapter uh, 16, uh, chapter 6, verse 14, we find that Bartholomew is always linked with Philip in the synoptic gospels. That's what you find. Uh, Bartholomew is always linked with Philip. However, John and the gospel of John, uh, John makes no mention of Bartholomew. And, and instead of linking Bartholomew with Philip in the Gospel of John, what we find, John chapter 1, verse 45 and verse number 46, we find that Nathaniel is linked with Philip. Nathaniel is linked with Philip. And so therefore, I believe, and, and, uh, and many others have come to the same conclusion, that, that the truth of the matter is Bartholomew and Nathaniel are actually, they're the same person. They're the same person. They are one and the same. Now let's consider also his parent, his parent. Uh, you remember in our study of Peter in Matthew chapter 16, uh, verse number 17, we saw that he was called, remember he was called by the name Simon Barjona. Remember that? Simon Barjona. And, and we learned that that prefix bar actually means son of. He, so it was Simon, the son of 
Jonah. Well, here we find a fellow by the name of Bartholomew. It's the same kind of a thing. The name Bartholomew is a Hebrew name, which actually means son of Talmai, son of Talmai, or son of furrows. You know what a furrow is? A furrow, that's, that, that's the line you plow in a field. You plow a straight furrow in order to plant your crops uh, in a straight row. And, and so uh, yeah, that's, that's the idea behind it. And so because of this name, though, and this is where it gets a little interesting, uh, because of this name, as we mentioned a moment ago, some have suggested uh, that Bartholomew had a, he had a royal heritage. He had a royal heritage. You, you know, there's a lot of people today who are wanting to trace their genealogies, especially in, in America. They, they want to trace your genealogies. You know, they want to find out where they come from. And, and so they actually have companies that will do that for you. You pay them money. And, uh, and, and, and it's interesting that if you pay them enough, you will always go back to royalty. Okay. <laughs> you know, I don't know how they do that, but everybody's a royal if you pay enough. But anyway, there are some who say that Bartholomew, that, that he, he goes back to, to, to royalty. And, and to prove their point, uh, they have tried to link Bartholomew to a Syrian king, a Syrian king. He's mentioned in 2 Samuel chapter 3, verse 3. And this Syrian king was actually called Talmai, Talmai. Of course, the Lord Jesus himself totally destroys that theory. When, when, you, when you just look at the Bible, that theory just kind of goes right out the window. Uh, the Lord Jesus destroys it when he clearly refers to Nathanael, uh, John chapter 1, verse 47. He refers to Nathanael not as a Syrian. He refers to him as an Israelite. He's a man of Israel. And, and so the idea that he is somehow related to Syrian royalty, well, that just doesn't fly when you compare that with what the Word of God says, okay? And, and so the issue is cleared up then for us. Uh, when we look at it in this way, the name Bartholomew was used to identify who he was. He was the son of. He was the son of. And, and, and then the name Nathaniel, the name Nathaniel is used to identify what he was, who he was, what he was, and what was he. Well, the name Nathaniel actually means gift from God, a gift from God. And so, and so that's what we can see as we consider uh, his parent. Obviously, uh, he had a, some godly parents who would choose such a name as Nathaniel and recognize that this son is, in fact, a gift from God. By the way, every child is a gift from God, right? That's what the Bible tells us. Every child is a gift from God. And, and, so, and so the name Nathaniel. We, all, we also see his place. His place. Uh, in John chapter 21, verse number two, there were together Simon Peter and Thomas called Didymus and Nathanael of Canaan and Galilee and the sons of Zebedee and two other of his disciples. And, and, and so what we find here in this text is that Nathanael or Bartholomew uh, was actually from Canaan of Galilee. Now, do you remember what happened in Cana of Galilee early in our Lord's ministry? You remember what happened there? First miracle. Huh? First miracle. First miracle. Yeah. What was the miracle? Cana. Turned water into wine. Where? Cana. Yeah, but what was going on when he turned? A wedding. Yeah, there was a wedding. There was a wedding going on. That was the Lord's first miracle. Interesting thing. Uh, some early tradition, now this isn't in the Bible, but some early tradition says that not only was Bartholomew or Nathaniel a, a witness to this amazing miracle, the first miracle that Jesus did, uh, there are some traditions that have actually suggested it was his wedding. It was his wedding where this great miracle was done. Now, is that true? Well, we don't know, but it's, it's a fun story anyway. We'll find out when we get to heaven. Uh, if it's not true, I'll let you know. Uh, but, but So whether it's true or not, we, we, we cannot say, but, but certainly even if it wasn't his wedding, what we do know, he was a witness. He saw, he saw the miracle that was done. Uh, let's notice letter D. 
his profession. Uh, after his resurrection, the Lord Jesus instructed his apostles, you remember, he told them to go, uh, he told them to go to the Sea of Galilee and, uh, and told them that they were to wait there, that he would join with them later. And, and so they go there. And, and while they're waiting, uh, while they're waiting for the Lord Jesus to come, uh, the Bible says in John 21, verse 3, Simon Peter saith unto them, I'm going fishing. I'm going fishing. And, and, and so they say unto him, well, we also go with thee. And they went forth entered into a ship immediately, and that night they caught nothing. Now, you'll notice in this verse that three times you find the word they. 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 Well, who is they? Who, who are these people that went with Simon Peter when he said, I'm going to go, I'm going to go fishing? Well, they're clearly identified if you look at John 21, verse 2. And, and the previous verse, these they's are identified for us and one of them is Nathaniel. He, he is one of those who went fishing with Peter. And so therefore, I think it is, it's fair that we can assume, it's fair to assume that this Bartholomew, this Nathaniel, uh, like Peter and, and John and, and James and Andrew, uh, he was also a fisherman. He was also a fisherman. Now let's talk about number two, his conversion his conversion. Uh, we will find the account of, of Bartholomew's conversion or Nathaniel's conversion. And, and it's recorded for us in, uh, it's recorded for us by John in, in the Gospel of John chapter one. And there are six things that I want us to notice as we consider this. First of all, uh, let's notice the concern, the concern. In, in John chapter one and verse number 45, uh, Philip findeth Nathanael, and saith unto him, We have found him of whom Moses and the law and the prophets did write, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Now, you remember in our study of Philip last time, we talked about his concern uh, for his friend. And, and by way of review, let me just mention very quickly the experience of his concern. Uh, Philip had met the Lord himself. Philip had come into a relationship with the Lord Jesus. And so he's concerned about his friend, Nathaniel. And, and so, and, and of course, we understand that before we can effectively lead other people to Christ, we have to know Christ ourselves. If you don't have that relationship with Christ, you're not going to ever be able to effectively influence others for Christ. So, so Phillips has a relationship with the Lord. He has a, he has a concern uh, for his friend. And, and, and so we find not only the experience of it, but we find the earnestness of it. The earnestness of it. He findeth Nathaniel. Uh, the implication is obvious. He findeth him because he searcheth for him. He was looking for Nathaniel. He wanted to find him. He wanted to have the opportunity to share what he had found with his friend. And we mentioned last time, remember? He didn't have all the facts right. Remember what he, he said? Jesus is the son of Joseph. Oh, Jesus wasn't the son of Joseph. He's the son of God. But, but Philip hadn't gotten to that point yet in his own life, but he knew enough that he wanted to bring his friend to meet this one who would be the Messiah. And, and, so, and so he goes and he seeks diligently to bring Nathaniel to Christ. Certainly, Nathaniel, Bartholomew, was blessed to have a friend like, like Philip. And, and by the way, the best friend you will ever find in your life is the one who always encourages you to do right. The best friend you will ever have in your life is the one who encourages you to live for God, to serve God, to put God first in your life. You find friends who want to pull you away from church. They want to pull you away from God. Let me just tell you right now, they're not your friends. They're not your friends. They're your worst enemies. They're your worst enemies. And so what a wonderful thing to have a friend like Philip, certainly Nathaniel or Bartholomew was blessed. Let, let's notice also the contention, the contention. 
And, and John chapter 1, verse number 46, And Nathanael said unto him, Can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? Now, again, we, we, we mentioned this last time when we were talking about Philip. Uh, can any good thing come out? You, you see, Nazareth did not have the good reputation uh, among the people of Judea. Did not have a good reputation. It, it was the kind of place that no good Jew would, would ever believe to be worthy of being the hometown for their long-awaited Messiah. No, no, no good Jew would ever believe that, that their Messiah would, would actually come from Nazareth. Uh, they, 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 could not, they, could not, they could not accept that. But, but Philip, when, when Nathaniel raises his objection, can any good thing come out of Nazareth? Philip doesn't get into an argument. He, he doesn't get into a debate. He simply says, come and see. Come and see. And so verse number 46, Philip says to him, just come and see. Just come and see for yourself. Come and see for yourself. And so then we see, uh, let her see the coming. In, in verse number 47, in verse number 47, uh, Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him and saith of him, Behold, an Israelite indeed in whom is no guile. Now, even though Nathanael or Bartholomew was skeptical, he's skeptical about Nazareth producing the Messiah, he still came. Now, this is an interesting thing. He still came at Philip's request. Now, think about that. He, he, even though he's skeptical, can't even imagine that such a thing would be true. And yet still he comes at Philip's request to examine the evidence. Now, why would he do that? Well, first of all, he did it because he knew Philip. Because he knew Philip. You remember the story of, uh, back in the book of Genesis, the story of Lot? And, and you remember Lot left Abram and, and he pitches his tent towards Sodom, right? And then not long after that, you find Lot is not towards Sodom. He is in Sodom. And, uh, and, and so, and, and then the, the angels came with that warning. God's going to destroy this place, Lot. You, you get your wife, you get your kids, you get your sons-in-law, and you get out of here because God is going to destroy this place. He's going to rain fire and brimstone down on it. It's going to be a total destruction. You, you need to get out, get out, get out. Of course, Lot, he, he, he goes to warn, he goes to warn his, his family. This is, what, this is what the angels have said. This is what's going to happen. So he goes to warn them. And do you remember the reception? that his family gave him? I'll show it to you. Genesis chapter 19, verse 14. When he goes to tell them that judgment is coming, he seemed as one that mocked unto his sons-in-law. In other words, when he said, hey guys, God's judgment is going to come, they <laughs> There's no lot. He's he's telling a joke. He, he's he, he's he's being funny. He, he's talking about judgment. We not, uh, yeah, he seemed like one that mocked. You know why? Because there was nothing in Lot's life that ever caused his family to take seriously his relationship with God. There was nothing in his life that ever caused his family to look at him and say, "Well, you know, he is a man of God." If God is giving a warning, we better listen. If God is telling us to get out, we better obey. There was nothing in Lot's life that would cause them to think that way. Nothing in Lot's life. Bottom line, because of his poor character, because of his poor testimony, his family ignored the warning and they were destroyed in the judgment. They were destroyed in the judgment. But here's the point. Because Philip's character and because his testimony was marked by a godliness and a holiness and a sincerity, because of that, even though his message was doubted, Nathaniel said, well, I'm going to go see. 
I'm going to go see. I, I can't believe this can be true, but I know Philip. And so I'm going to go see. I'm going to go see what's going on. Well, what a great thing it would be if each one of us had that kind of character. What a great thing it would be if every member of Heritage Baptist Church had that kind of testimony so that, so that we would never be guilty of discouraging people from coming to Christ. But we would always be effectively encouraging others to come to Christ. Not just by what we say, and that's important. What we say is very important, but what you say is of absolutely no value if you do not have a life that backs it up. So Philip, he comes because of his testimony, because of his character, because of the life that he lived. When he said to his friend Nathaniel, come and see, Nathaniel did it. He, he went to see, he went to see. And so, and then we see letter D, we see the compliment, the compliment. Verse number 47, Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him, saith of him, behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom is no guile. Now, this compliment was actually, it, it's actually a twofold compliment. It, it's a twofold compliment. Uh, but the parts are related to each other because both of them speak of, of Nathaniel or Bartholomew's character. They, we talked about Philip's character, but Bartholomew, Nathaniel, he also was a man of character. And, and, and so both of these things speak uh, of his character. Uh, first of all, there's a reference in, in, uh, in, in Romans chapter 9 and verse number 6. Well, there's the reference that he is an Israelite indeed. Romans chapter 9 verse 6, for they are not all Israel which are of Israel. Now, what's the apostle Paul mean there? What the Apostle Paul is saying there is simply this. There are many people who are born in Israel. They have a Jewish passport, if you will. They're born in Israel. They have a Jewish passport. But the reality is they're not living up to their name as God's chosen people. They're, they're not living up to their name as God's chosen people. But that was not true of Nathaniel. That was not true of Bartholomew. He was an Israelite indeed. He's an Israelite indeed. In other words, his life reflected everything that the Lord God desired to see in the lives of his chosen people. His life was a reflection of everything that God wanted to see. So, so he talks about his race. He's an Israelite in whom there is no deed. Also, we find his righteousness there. Uh, the Lord Jesus makes it very clear that in him there is no guile. There is no guile. Uh, Psalm 32, verse number two. Uh, here's what the psalmist said. Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputeth not iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no Guile. Now, what does that word guile mean? It, it simply means that there is no deceitfulness. There, there's no hypocrisy in him. In other words, he is a he is a what you see is what you get kind of a person. He, he's real. He's sincere. He's the real deal, if you will. He is a he's an Israelite indeed, and he's an Israelite in whom there is no guile. Now, please understand, that doesn't mean that he was without sin. None of us can make that claim. Uh, none of us can make the claim that we're out of sin. Rather, as one commentator has noted, he was an, he was an Israelite in whom there was no Jacob. You remember the story of Jacob? What, what, what was Jacob's chief characteristic? He was a deceiver. He was a deceiver, right? He was a hypocrite. He was, he was a deceiver, but, but not, not Nathaniel, not Nathaniel, not, Bar, uh, not, uh, not Bartholomew. Uh, he was a man who was sincere. He was a man who was sincere. He was a man who was humble. He was not afraid to state his convictions. He was not afraid to stand up for his convictions. And that's why he was quick to express his dislike. He was quick to express even his hatred for the place called Nazareth. 
and his conviction that no Messiah could ever come from such a place. He stood for what he believed without fear, without, without hypocrisy. But when the Lord Jesus compliments Nathaniel, he compliments Bartholomew because of his love of purity and his love for holiness. It actually affirmed his own holiness. See, see when, when the Lord Jesus compliments Nathaniel for his holiness, it affirms that Jesus Christ himself is holy and he recognizes his holiness. He, he, he compliments Nathaniel for his own purity of character. And, and so therefore, it was, a, it was a demonstration to Nathaniel that Jesus Christ is also of pure character. And, and all of this ties together when we consider his confession, his confession. Verse 48, verse 49, Nathaniel saith unto him, whence knowest thou me? And, and, and in other words, you're, you're a stranger around here. How, how do you know me? How, how do you know anything about me? How do you not only know who I am, but how, how do you know my heart? How do you know my character? How, how do you know what I'm really like? And Jesus answered and said unto him, Before that Philip called thee, when thou wast under the fig tree, I saw thee. And Nathanael answered and said unto him, Rabbi. Now here's the confession. Thou art the Son of God. Thou art the Son of God. Thou art the King of Israel. In, in other words, he recognized two things. He recognized the deity of Christ. He recognized the deity of Christ. You are the Son of God. Not only did he recognize the deity of Christ, he recognized the royalty of Christ. You are the king. You are the Messiah of Israel. The confession. And then there is the compensation. The compensation. In, in verse 50, in verse number 51, Jesus answered and said unto him, Because I said unto thee, I saw thee under the fig tree, believest thou? Is, 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 is that why you believe? Because I, what I said, I, I saw you there. Uh, but here's, here's something else. Thou shalt see greater things than these. And he saith unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Hereafter ye shall see heaven open, and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. There's two things here I want us to notice. First of all, there's the principle. Nathaniel, Bartholomew simply believed because Christ saw him supernaturally. He knew him supernaturally. And, and because of that simple faith, his reward, this is the principle, his reward would be, you're going to see even greater things. You're going to see even greater things. And, and, of course, the particular thing he's going to see is he's going to see the heavens opened. He's going to see the heavens opened. Now, uh, this is a great commentary on the Old Testament story of Jacob's ladder. It, it's, a, it's a great commentary on the story of Jacob's ladder. The idea is simply that through faith, Nathaniel, Bartholomew, he, he would see things about the scriptures. He would see things about the Savior that had been closed to him before. It's, it's like heaven is going to be opened and, and he's going to see things that, that he never could quite comprehend before he met the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, faith always gains an understanding of spiritual things that unbelief can never grasp. Faith can always, it can always gain an understanding of spiritual things that unbelief can never grasp. And so Nathaniel Bartholomew had, had quite a meeting with the Lord Jesus. And, and as a result of it, his early doubts about who Jesus was, all of that was removed. And, and his faith in Christ, his faith in Christ is greatly rewarded. It's greatly rewarded. This was a meeting that Nathaniel never got over. And even though his name was never in the headlines, 
You know, he, he never made the front page of the Jerusalem Gazette or Christianity Today, okay? Yeah, he, he never made the headlines. He never made the headlines that way, yet he was a faithful disciple of Christ. He was a faithful follower of Christ. According to tradition, he eventually carried the message of the gospel uh, to many different countries, but, but he, ended up, he ended up in the area of Armenia. He ended up in the area of Armenia, and, and it is there, according to Fox's Book of Martyrs, that because of his preaching, he was actually skinned alive and then crucified on a Roman cross. I pray that God will help us to be less concerned about who is well-known. Let's don't get so excited about who is who is getting the headlines, who is getting the, the big press, who, who's the most popular and best known. And all. Let, let's don't be so worried about who's being exalted. Let's be more concerned about being faithful to love Jesus Christ and to serve him with all of our heart. That's what we learn from Nathaniel. That's what we learn from Bartholomew. Just a simple man of faith, pure of heart, no hypocrite, pure of heart, and not afraid to stand up for the truth.